All right, welcome back everyone. Today's job's brakes on this thing. Uh, we're gonna do front pads, rear pads, and also new rotors on the front. It's got the slightest wobble when you put the brakes on, and that's a sign of um, the rotors starting to warp. These are the original factory ones. It's done, what has it done? 128,000, something like that. There you go. 128,994, so call it Call it 130,000 kilometers um, on all the factory gear. So I don't think they're actually that bad, but I'm just gonna replace them anyway, because this car is, it's 2016. We've had it since brand new. And yeah, I wanna just get another 10 years out of it. So I've actually gone fancy and I've got slotted rotors for the front. These are the part number, if you're uh, curious. So they're going on the front and we've got Bendix which is um, good pads front and rear. Part numbers there. I think they might be the rears. And then probably the fronts. Part number. You know, yeah, buy good stuff for your brakes, guys. Don't get cheap, nasty crap, because then when your brakes start squealing and all the rest of it, you'll just be kicking yourself. So buy the best that you can afford. I know everyone can't afford, you know, amazing stuff, but yeah, if you can, just buy good stuff. So let's get started on this. I'm probably gonna just film one at a time. It's no point filming the other side because you can do exactly what I did on one side, on the other side. So I'll film that one, film the back, and um, yeah, hopefully you can learn something. So let's get into it. Right, let me bring in here so look if you were just replacing the brake pads it's super easy on these Japanese cars so you, you got your caliper here so your caliper holding bracket um, so if you're just doing the pads right these these are pins that go through here and just kind of slide in there so all you need to do is literally undo that bolt will come out and then the whole caliper will kind of pivot up and then you can do the pads bang back down it's the way it's like the easiest thing in the world so but what we need to do because we're changing the rotor then take this bracket off which is if i can get you in there and out of the light is 17 mil bolts two of them that one there and that one down there and that'll bring this bracket off as well so that's got to come off obviously so this can slide off um this brake hose is Kind of short, if I can pop that out of there, that would be awesome. Because then it'll give us more room to work with. Alright, so that's out of there. I'm just going to undo these two big 17mm bolts and that whole assembly should come off. So, good tip, get a bit of wire handy, hanging off your spring or something or somewhere sturdy. So when you pull this off, you can hang it up so the pressure's not on the brake line because you don't want to you don't want to pull that down and kink it or snap it or anything like that so you want the caliper supported so is which what is <laughs> come on now talk which is exactly what i'm going to do now so them two big 17 mil bolts and then should be able to pull this whole thing off all right so I'm gonna make my life easy. 
I'm just gonna turn the steering wheel to the right. That way I'll be able to get to these bolts easier. All right, that's given us a bit more room. Like that, so I can probably get you in this way. If you wanna see what we're doing. what I mean about my wire, just kind of have that there, so it's supporting all your stuff. Just like so. This rotor should just come off now. They're normally pretty tight because they always rust up around there, so might give it a few little love taps. Easy as that. Just give it a bit of a wire brush so there's no rust where it's got to sit. So here's our new parts. Just get it out and make sure it's the same. It's a nice looking one, isn't it? Let's make sure it's all the same size. Yep, beautiful. All right, then it's easy as sliding the back over. So I, uh, I kind of forgot I need to put this back on and then I still need to change the brakes like normal. I could have done that first. I might do that on the next side, flip that up, push the piston back in. But I hope this will just, I hope this will go over. I hope this will go over this rotor as it is and I can bolt it back on and then put the new pads in fingers crossed otherwise I might just have to push the pad in a bit that will get that beautiful always like a bit of Loctite when you're dealing with brakes and bolts and stuff like that, for the ones that you really don't want coming off, just a smidge. Don't have to go crazy with it.
All right, now I can show you what I mean about the brake pad. So um, it's always easy I found to flip it up because the brake line, if you try and go the other way, it pulls the brake line too, too tight. So always do the bottom one, easy as that. Bolt comes out. Because the whole point of the caliper, it needs to needs to be able to slide backwards and forwards as your brakes wear. See what I mean? They're just a pin. So always keep that nice and greased up too. Make sure that always stays nice and lubricated. And yeah, it's simple as pulling your caliper up like that. And there's your brake pads. So I use my handy wire again. like that okay so there's our brake pads they've stayed behind in the bracket when you put new brake pads in obviously as they wear down they get smaller and smaller like that and your piston comes out of your caliper so what you need what you need to do is push that back in seat it flat so when your new pads go in your caliper will go over the top so just use an old brake pad put it up against that and get a clamp and squeeze that piston back in but first what you got to do because remember as you're pushing that piston back in fluid brake fluid is coming back into your master cylinder so go into your master cylinder take the lid off and we need to take some of that brake fluid out so I'll show you how to do that. So I just got a little syringe that you can buy from your auto parts shop. And I'll normally just suck a bit of it out. Just like so. And as you're pushing that caliper piston back in, just always pop your head up every now and often have a look. That should be enough, just for that side at least anyway, but just keep an eye on it. You just don't want it to overflow. They really are in good nick, them pads. They didn't need doing it all, but hey, it'll stop that. It'll stop that slight wobble in the caliper anyway. Okay. So if you're wondering what this thing's for, this is a little spring clip that when your brake pad wears down to a certain amount, this little edge here will start rubbing on your rotor and make the squeal, which is what you hear when your brake pads get low. So it's just a bit of a warning device, that thing there. But pretty handy nonetheless. This is what I mean about just chuck an old pad in there to push against. So that's just winding in slowly. And just wind it in until it hits the bottom. Which is right there. That's it. Piston, push back. That's all the way in. Beautiful. Here's our new Bendix pads. They come with new little springs to tell you when your pads are low. So they're exactly the same pads either side, doesn't matter which side you put them in on this model. Alright, so these, these Bendix pads, they might all be different, but these ones have already got a backing plate on them. Whereas you see your factory pads don't have anything on them. So we don't need to use all the all these backing pads and stuff like that. I think they're just to stop the squealing and vibration, all that kind of stuff. But this is a plastic one. I'm not gonna use this tin one. I might put this plastic one on the outside edge 
because it just because it fits nice and hopefully that might stop any squealing that might happen just to dampen the harmonics or whatever all that kind of fancy stuff so I'm gonna put that one on and then we'll just pop this pop this pan in here like so Yeah, if we look at this one, same thing, that's got some kind of pad there, little plastic one, might use him, same thing, just to possibly stop any noise. Well, see, that's, that's not going over there very well either, so, yeah, nah, I'm not going to use him. Let's put that little clip on. little clip just um, clips on like so, like that. And you'll see when your brake pad gets low that'll start making a horrible racket. And then yeah, this pad goes in. Like so. And then because your piston's pushed all the way in, that caliper should just pop down over all of that stuff now. Like so. And there's your pin. Like I said, make sure it's lubed up. They're all, these are nice and greasy still. So make sure your rubber's where it needs to be. Them through and tighten nice and tight. Beautiful. I probably wouldn't lock tight these ones because these are coming in and out all the time, but yeah. That's um that's one side officially done with the new pads and everything. So looking good. I'll go do the other side now and then we'll tackle the back brakes. Just don't forget to pop your brake line back in its little holder. Bring you into these rear brakes. All right, so these look easy enough as well. Uh, it seems that the handbrake is in the caliper. So I'm guessing we've got a piston that'll need screwing in rather than pushing in um, like the other ones. So, but same principle, we're gonna undo them bottom bolts there. We'll probably just do that one. And then flip the caliper up and then we'll have a look from there. Well, one thing to mention, make sure your handbrake's off. So I might actually double check that before I lift the caliper up. Handbrake was on, so now it's off. You've probably seen something move back here, that thing there. Um, but yeah, so. Flip this up and have a look. If we can. Come on. Why don't you want to come up? Like 
Let's undo this top one and have a look what it's doing. Okay, it wanted both of them to come off, so there you go. I don't know if you can see that, see this piston. It's got some indentations in it, so that needs to be wound in as opposed to pushed in. So um, I'm probably gonna have to do that with long nose pliers because I don't think I've got the right tool for that. I've got like a, oh, I might, I'll go have a look actually. It should do that actually now thinking about it. Oh, so I, there's me rear brake tool because a lot of the pistons need to be wound in. So I think that'll be able to work. Surely. Fucking that one. Yeah. That'll be perfect. So. So pretty much, like you could use, like I said, you could probably use long nose pliers or like even like a you know, an open-ended spanner or something just to get in there and turn that, but that's kind of what I'm working with. So it's got all different types, but yeah, I'm going to use them two ones and put it in there and uh, I believe clockwise. Clockwise should get it going in. If I can get it on there, right? I might use a different one actually. Why is this? Why is that one? Let's see if that goes a bit better. I'm just doing it. It doesn't take much, maybe like one whole complete turn. That's pretty much it. Make sure your rubber's in there sitting nice. I think that's it. easy enough yes yeah, so these pads are you know, pretty much the same as the front to change there's my new ones my new Bendix pads Got these ones here so I'll just put this pad on just because it goes nice we won't need that bottom one because that's already got it on here Goes in. Comes out, and there you go. Oh, so that's got the spring on the other side, which doesn't really matter anyway. See if this one goes on nice. Yep, that one can go on because it sits there good. actually so I just looked at the pads so you got to get the right side so this spring is on that side which is what we need so let's use that pad I'm glad I double check that
like so. Oh, they're in there good. Caliper back over. Like so. All right, so that's one uh, one side done at the back. Nice and easy. I'll go to the other side now, and then we can finish this job off. Before you put the wheel on, just give the rotor and front and back a wipe down with good old brake cleaner, just in case there's any oil on there. So I'll just spray it onto the rag. Just give the braking surface, you don't want to get it on the black paint. I'm already rotating all my wheels as well while I'm here at it. I just go diagonal across the other side. Might as well if you're taking all the wheels off. Okay, it's back on the ground, all done. Don't forget to, like, I rattle gun the wheel nuts up, but I always check them all by hand, so do that. Um, and here's the, so there's the brake fluid. We're almost at maximum again. So remember I sucked that fair decent amount out, so that's all come back up from the, the pistons being pushed back in the calipers. So don't forget, the pistons are all the way back in. So what we've got to do now is step on the brakes a few times, um, you know, go through the motions, start the car up. So the vacuum assist, the brake booster helps the brakes, you know, stomp on the brakes a few times, up and down with a handbrake, all that kind of jazz. And then we'll check the fluid level and top it up to where it needs to be. So the pedal will go to the floor a few times before the calipers fill up and pistons fill up. So just do it slowly in and out a few times. All right, so now it's getting hard after probably three pumps. So what I'll do now, I'll start the car up and just, you know, bit it backwards and forwards and just really stomp on the brakes good.
had yellow brake fluid in it, so I've got yellow, which I use for my truck, which is going to be pretty painful to get in there. I'll just grab a little funnel. Better yet, I just found myself a little pouring jug. There you go, to the maximum line. Quick little splash guard thing in there. Lid on, job done. There you go guys, a uh, nice easy project, probably you'd get all that done in an hour, um, probably took me about an hour and a half because of all the filming and all that junk, so yeah, super easy job to do by yourself, um, don't be shy, give it a crack, I know, you know, it's dairy work on your brakes and all, but it really isn't hard, just double check everything, eh, so, but yeah, thanks for watching, I'm off to do a lap around the block, make sure everything's Mickey Mouse, and um, I guess I'll see you on the next video, catch you later.